Good afternoon. Uh, I'm uh, Professor Sancona from Polytechnic University of Bari, and I will present this work. And I know they work also in the blockchain middle of demographic <laughs> 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 Professor Galliani. Yeah. And uh, I will present the, the work study of the positive behavior around the drug deal by means of thermal methods. So, the, the, here we, we can see so the outline of the works, an introduction, and the aim of the work, a background, a background about the thermoelastic stress analysis, um, some information about thermal signal and best behavior, <coughs> then uh, um, thermoelastic stress analysis for fatigue limit evaluation for captive growth monitoring and uh, uh, thermoelastic stress analysis used for the stress intensity factor calculation. Then our methods and data analysis, and then set up materials, and in the end, the results of the work. So, um, classical method for monitoring the captive growth uh, during fractal mechanics stats um, require uh, the offline monitoring or also the online monitoring, but uh, with the complex setup uh, uh, for the real and the um, evaluation of the craft tip position. So, um, the principal methods uh, used for the monitoring are the um, microscopy, ultrasound, say, and other methods uh, that we've used with, uh, with before. Mm -hmm. And uh, with thermal methods, uh, such as thermoelastic stress analysis, uh, we can um, do, uh, we can evaluate uh, also the uh, crop deposition and the uh, stress intensity factor with the same uh, direct <coughs> test uh, with the infrared camera. The aim of the work is to propose, uh, in this case, the innovative process to, to study the dynamic crack behavior of materials based on the analysis in time domain. Uh, of the thermal signal. In this work, we uh, propose this procedure to uh, mark to uh, stand and still uh, Martin City one and outstanding Tick one. So, uh, thermoelastic stress analysis uh, is a, a non top contact te technique that uh, provides stress maps uh, of the components subjected to a dynamic load. Um, the thermoelastic effect uh, describes the variation in temperature uh, reversible. Uh, that occurs in a homogeneous uh, isotropic uh, solid when it's deforming uh, in the elastic range. So we can, re oh, sorry. we can relate the variation temperature to the sum of the principal stresses through the uh, k-value that is the thermoelastic constant of the material. Uh, a typical thermoelastic stress analysis setups, uh, setup provides a um, loading machine, an infrared camera, and a lock-in amplifier. Uh, the um, signal from the locking machine and the signal from the detector were uh, analyzed uh, by the locking amplifier so we can uh, uh, have the output, the amplitude and the phase signal output. Uh, usually the, um, uh, the signal from the infrared camera, so the thermoelastic uh, signal, is usually presented as a vector where modulus is proportional to the change in temperature due uh, to the effect. And the phase means the angular shift between the uh, thermoelastic and the reference signal from the loading machine. So the infrared detector is able to detect the infrared flux emitted from the surface of the body. So we can relate also the, the principal stress uh, of the surface of the specimen with the thermoelastic signal and uh, through the calibration constant A. Uh, the calibration constant depends on material, equipment, sensor, uh, setup, and uh, the environmental condition during the test. Oh. The, the variation in temperature um, in the same domain uh, can be written uh, with this equation. Uh, to all. Uh, these terms uh, represent the main temperature variation, the second term T1, the amplitude of the thermoelastic signal. This represents the phase thermoelastic signal, and then we can consider the um, other two parameters, T2, that is the amplitude of the temperature signal uh, due, to, due to the classic contribution and twice frequency of the loading machine. And the T2 is the phase of the temperature signal due to the classic contribution. So uh, we have to consider also not only the contribution of the, um, the, the, the of the elastic response, the variation temperature of the elastic response, but also the temperature due to the dissipation uh, for the plastic work that is the, 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 the application load. Um, thermoelastic stress analysis uh, um, is 
possible to um, we can monitor also the um, limit evaluation, fatigue limit evaluation, considering the total, so, uh, considering the temperature variation on uh, the specimen. And uh, we, uh, our groups, in another approach, uh, use the threshold method, uh, an alternative method uh, of the well-known Ricitano method, uh, to try to investigate the fatigue limit evaluation. And um, it's possible to investigate also the other parameters of the thermal signal to better understand the fatigue limit uh, behavior. Uh, with the thermoelastic stress analysis, Oh, on the right, we can see the uh, classical uh, phase image um, required during a fractal mechanic test. Uh, uh, the phase value is uh, normally constant unless the adiabatic conditions are not achieved, uh, like, so, uh, like in the first region, in the, uh, so far from the crack tip uh, region. Then, um, near the crack tip region, two phenomena that lead to a lack of the adiabatic condition. The heat generation due to the plastic work and the presence of high stress gradients. So there is a variation in the phase signal from positive to negative. Um, then the, the phase signal value uh, along the crop direction growth uh, returns to be uh, from negative to uh, positive. So we can estimate, estimate the position of the crop tip when uh, the, 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 the signal uh, became, uh, returns to positive value. Here are shown some results obtained for uh, 30,000 cycles, 80,000 80, cycles, and 140,000 cycles for the um, um, evaluation, the monitoring of the craft deposition during the tests. Uh, with thermoelastic stress analysis, it's also possible to evaluate the uh, stress intensity uh, factor. So we can relate the, the, thermo the thermoelastic signal through the um, uh, through the stress intensity factor during the test. So, uh, by simple consideration, around, uh, considering an area around the, uh, the crop tip, uh, around the, um, the crop tip position, we can evaluate the trend of the maximum signal uh, during the test. So, it's possible to uh, evaluate stress in trends, the stress in trends detector only knowing the constant the calibration of the, of the test. Uh, a, it's possible to evaluate, uh, for example, uh, uh, considering a dog bone specimen with the uh, uh, fixed load. So we can, uh, knowing the, the stress uh, during the test, it's possible to evaluate the value of uh, A. In uh, this work, we used three CT specimens for each material, smart and CT and austenitic. The loading frequency was uh, of 13 Hz, the load ratio of 0 0.1. And uh, the specimen were uh, sprayed with the fat black spray for increasing the emissivity of the surface. Um, the loading machine was an MTS of, uh, with a load cell uh, of 100 kN. The thermocamera was with SC 6540. Um, the, um, the data were processed by software IRTA and uh, a constant force amplitude processor uh, according to the standard. Uh, we made three uh, acquisition at four, uh, four thousands, forty thousands, and one hundred and twelve thousand cycle, and the pixel dimension was of uh, zero point zero sixty seven millimeters. In this, uh, uh, here we can see the result obtained, the image <coughs> obtained for the five parameter considered for the magnetic steel and steel at the stress intensity factor of 23.6 uh, at number cycle of 14,000 cycle. From the first image, considering the mean temperature variation during the, the, load, the loading, it's uh, not possible to evaluate the information about the crop deposition or uh, about some information like the stress intensity factor uh, and the other um, aspect that we had to just uh, uh, think about. So we had to consider also the, the other components of the thermoelastic, of the, considering the, the variation of the temper in time domain. So uh, we can see here the uh, results for the Martin City style and steel. <sighs> In the first part uh, here we can see the um, trend of the C2 component, so the amplitude of the second, second harmonic component along, uh, along the, crack, uh, the growth direction. 
So we can uh, uh, see two uh, areas. A2 <coughs> represents the plastic area uh, due to the plastic work during the cycle. And uh, A1 uh, the, is related to the phenomenon of the crop closure <coughs> before the, 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 the crop tip. And uh, considering the phase of the second harmonic component, phi2, it's uh, possible to highlight a phase signal inversion uh, in the same point uh, where uh, we present the minimum between the two uh, areas. Uh, probably uh, this uh, phase signal inversion is related for the, uh, of the crop tip position. So we can uh, see the same, uh, um, same result for the austenitic uh, stainless steel, and uh, the same uh, uh, consideration can, are possible to do the same consideration for the austenitic and the uh, martensitic stainless steel. Uh, in this image, it's possible to see the comparison between the phase signal V1 uh, related to the uh, frequency of the loading ma machine and the two signal um, of the second component uh, of the uh, series, Fourier series. With this binarization of the MH, it's uh, with the uh, same uh, threshold value for uh, all the MH, it's possible to um, to highlight the fact that uh, with increasing uh, uh, cycles, uh, the, um, the plastic area seems to be uh, greater than uh, uh, the stocks. And uh, uh, analyzing the T2 component, uh, this is not the same thing with the V1 component. In the end, in this, uh, we made a comparison between the phase signal, V1, and the, the component T2 and V2. There is, uh, um, uh, we, we investigate this uh, behavior uh, in, uh, for the stainless steel, and we notice uh, a difference between the um, evaluation of the crafty position of about 0.2 millimeters. Because for the considering phi one, uh, this point would be uh, considered like the um, crafty position, and uh, instead with the considering the T two. Uh, component, uh, probably we have to consider the minimum value of the component. Here we can see the, uh, the same behavior with a little difference between the position of the crack tip um, also in considering the fit uh, component. Um, we want to, to, to test other specimens to investigate this uh, little difference because uh, we think uh, probably it can depend on motion or um, for the resolution uh, of the technique so we have to improve this uh, our resolution to have more uh, information about it. In conclusion uh, it was proposed a new thermographic procedure uh, for characterizing the thermal behavior of the crop growth in material. In particular the amplitude and the phase of the thermal component and the twice the frequency of the mechanical loading uh, were studied by means of an analysis in the time domain of the temperature signal. Uh, two stainless steel uh, were tested, martensitic and austenitic one, uh, and the constant force uh, amplitude uh, procedure we used, was used on compact tensile specimen. Uh, the tests were made by using a cold infrared camera and uh, uh, we put an extension ring to, in order to obtain higher resolution on the analyzed uh, area. Information about the temperature variation due to the plastic behavior that occurs at twice the uh, frequency of uh, elastic uh, deformation uh, were obtained in this work, and uh, the amplitude and the phase signal at twice the frequency loading uh, seems to provide uh, complementary information uh, with respect to the thermoelastic stress analysis uh, usually used for the characterization, the characterization of the, of the fatigue crack material. Thank you.